absolutely agree with is, you know, I love this image because on the corner, it's tough to see with the light there, but on that corner on the right hand side, you can see it's actually reflecting the light from the hallway in the stone. Like it's, it's so smooth. It's what's smooth and it's polished. And this isn't a natural property of, of granite, right? You've got to work pretty hard to get a mirror finish on it. Mm hmm. Uh, and then you know, obviously, the, but you can see that the ribs are kind of sh being shown up by the the just the light almost is being used to the reflection to show that the rib line on this thing. But mm -hmm. then you take a close look at the hieroglyphs and they're just crudely fizzled. <laughs> hieroglyphs <laughs> are never polished, right? So the rest of the stone is polished, and there's obviously it's not all flat surfaces and easy polishing. There's lots of interesting uh, and and tight sort of parts of the stonework that that were polished but the hieroglyphs are never polished so you know for example if you look at some of these incredible statues that come from the old kingdom you know you have the 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 top of the chest to the clavicle here is all beautifully done you you have the fingernail here ben from uncharted x highlights the crude hieroglyphs and this is in the Serapeum, but this is on box 17 this is a feature that you'll see in all the ancient lost high technology videos is to look at box in the box in niche 17 and say we'll look at these crude hieroglyphs now we see these this video uh you can't well they are not of high quality but are, are they finished now that the shen ring is unfinished well who's going to be named in there so you can't just order a box like these overnight you know they have to you know so even modern times it would take some time to make these so they're prepared and they'd fill in the shen ring but the cruder hieroglyphs, yes, they are. Uh, and then they use this, well, look at this, the Serapeum, therefore, must be pre-dynastic. And, well, you'll see in any Serapeum video, Lost High Technology, look at these crude hieroglyphs. However, there's something that they never show you. This is the box in niche number two, the Armasus. It's much more detailed with in terms of decoration but uh, also the hieroglyphs now we'll come on to a serapine video on precision in uh, very soon but when it comes to this argument oh but the hieroglyphs well let's have a closer look at these box and you know the crude hieroglyphs well here just a few meters down from niche number 17 what do we have pop up any moment lovely hieroglyphs the hieroglyphs are polished better than the exterior of the box as well. So whenever you hear this, well, the crude, they'll, again, they'll just won't show you these. Or, you know, they'll focus on 17 or just glance over these and not go like, oh, wow, look at these hieroglyphs. This is a common trick that the lost high technologists do. Pick a low quality object and say this is the defining feature of all dynastic Egypt. Another thing that the lost ancient high technologists, as we saw examples there, oh, we'll look at the primitive, the crude hieroglyphs. Well, what about the beautiful hieroglyphs, which they never show? Another one of their constant statements is that the old stuff was better and that it got slowly worse over time. So people might look at these and go, oh, well, no, no, but, but this, this is not pre-dynastic. This is of the later period because these objects are superior. Well, that again crush it, you know, so if uh, if people go down in the comments, oh, but that's later period, well, so the later stuff is better then, which destroys that uh, that argument. But again, the, the high quality hieroglyphs, the um, higher level of decoration, and you wouldn't polish hieroglyphs like this because they would not be, you would have to do a tracing to see them. But also we'll see other objects like this where the hieroglyphs have been have a dull polish compared to the higher polish of the outside. The contrast of the hieroglyphs makes them much more readable. And then we have, again, an object like this, and this even might be later, to, you know, sort of towards the Ptolemaic era, I think. I'm not exactly sure. But again, we see the, the hieroglyphs higher quality, and they have been worked, and higher details have been put in. But you still you want the contrast in there. So the argument is the old stuff is better, not true and then the argument will the hieroglyphs were never polished not true this is how they create doubt so then they can insert lost ancient high technology lost civilization here are some examples of roman porphyry it's, it's essentially granite probably a little bit harder to polish they polish those stones they got in every little fine detail so these flowing robes you know to get in all that little, little nook and 
cranny, it's just like polishing a hieroglyph, the same process. You need to get a smaller tool and get into the into the tiny little area. It takes a lot more time because unlike a flat surface, you can't do a large area at once. You just, you know, you have to put the effort in to get into the tiny little nooks and crannies. Beautiful sculpture as well because they included these holes for the arms and the heads and then they would insert and fit these marble pieces to give, you know, the effect of clothes. Flowing robes, beautiful sculpture, far superior, uh, I think, by any definition. Um, sandpaper, that's the essence of this. Uh, it's about if you get a big rough rock, you're going to create scratches, but if you get finer and finer and finer powder, that's how you polish. That's still how they do it from polishing cars to polishing statues. I uh, found this example. Now, this is marble, but the same process goes on, I just because this is a good example of polishing in in the surfaces so that sphinx and the ribs and like this is must be lost technology no you just you know sandpaper water a cloth rub polish this is no mystery at all uh, this is a picture from Iravan temple in india and look at the tools that he uses in some parts of the world traditional stone masonry done by hand is still being used because well it's still cheaper than it is to get the tools and pay all the costs that are associated with it. In places such as Aravan Temple in the Inner Sanctum, their philosophy was to not use any modern tools unless it was legally necessary. Now, they did have to bring in a crane at one point because modern safety laws and insurance just won't allow you to do things the old-fashioned way. But see, yes, their tools, they get a scrap of stone and to get in every little nook and cranny and the sculpture and the decoration, that's how they do it. It's just basically rubbing sand against there to polish it. You, st you start with a rougher and then you work your way to smoother and smoother, just like sandpaper. From the rough to the smooth, that's how they polish. They still do it in polishing cars, for instance. So this um, argument is just one of pure myth and that they have supposedly expert stonemasons telling them. Now, where the hell did he get the idea that it's not a natural property of granite to be polished or that it takes a huge amount of work? No, it doesn't. I've, uh, I shouldn't have had to have done it because they just could have gone and asked, you know, looked at someone who's, who's done it. I've done multiple experiments, including impossible single-digit micron experiments. I'm more than happy, challenge open to any of these channels. Let's do a live stream experiment of it and do it in real time. Give, tell, have an uh, introduction video saying this is what you'll need. In one week we can do it. And in an hour's time we're going to create beautiful polishing done by hand and I, I've done it, I know how long it takes. People who are in the trade know what it, uh, what's involved. So this lost ancient high technology are lying about historical techniques. And you know, you get these beautiful examples of knees, like this is one of the best knees in, I mean, this is in granite diorite, not for nothing, but incredible musculature and bone structure. Granite diorite? Grano diorite. Grano diorite. How, how hard is that stone? Slightly harder than granite. In some way, it's like a mixture between granite and diorite. And what is the hardest stone on earth? Diamond. And diorite's how far? Diorite's like a seven and a half. So diamond's a 10 on the most scale uh -huh. of hardness. Um, you know, things like hardened steel might be a 6.5 and, and granite and granite can be a 6.5 to a seven. Some are diorite and flint and some of the other harder stones, you know, um, uh, either porphyry or, or dolerite can go up to like seven and a half, eight. Okay. Uh, corundum, uh, topaz, things like this are a nine. And, and they, we have artifacts made from things like corundum that they were shaping with a nine. I mean, it's as, and copper and bronze are like three and four finger, you know, it's, it's right. these are extreme marbles, like a three, uh, calcite's like a three. This is why a lot of sculptures done in oh, marble okay. these days. So statue of David, much, is that marble? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, marble. It's much, much, much softer than this stuff. Like incredibly, yeah. If you're if you're a modern sculptor, you ain't working in granite just because. Like it's right. it's not a good choice. Like it's you're gonna burn your tools out. It's gonna be a nightmare. And most hardness scale is another feature that lost ancient high technology, ancient aliens will bring up in regards to stone. Uh, even years later, like clearly they don't understand it. And even when it's explained to them, they keep repeating it because again, it's another lie that they need to perpetuate to build this narrative of it's impossible therefore but let's look so diamond is at 10 and talc is at one that doesn't mean that diamond is 10 times harder than talc this is a relative scale so what is harder than the other what is most scale 
it's a field test. It's like what scratches what. Now, technically speaking, steel doesn't have a Mohs scale because you know it's got uh, impurities in it. So you'd have to get iron. You know what is it? Or um, qu- uh, sorry, granite doesn't truly have a Mohs scale because granite is made of many different minerals. It's the minerals inside granite, quartz being the hardest generally that gives granite a rating of around seven. So we're gonna to come to seven and we'll see that all these you know, igneous stones are sitting around six to seven because they're not pure quartz. It's, so again, stone doesn't truly have a Mohs scale, it's the minerals that make it up. The percentage of the minerals will affect it. Now, that's what Mohs scale is about, scratching. Number one rule, like cuts like. So you'll often, you'll, you'll hear, we need diamond tools to cut something. Well, th- that the material, this is something that they literally say, Brian Foster still, you know, that the material needs to be harder to cut. Well, no, that's, that's just untrue because if that was true, diamond could not be cut because there's nothing harder than diamond on most scale. So logically speaking, this should just, you know, end this, uh, it's a silly, silly argument. Logic destroys this now. Diamond being the hardest, I can, you know, I can smash diamond with a hammer and break it into pieces. This will come to this in a moment. So diamond is used as, as an abrasive to cut and polish diamonds. Like cuts like. So this said it has to be harder, just not true. Now, if it was true, I could take a piece of granite in one hand, a granite in the other, and rub it against one another, and it would do nothing because it's not a harder material. But, you know, to break a piece of granite in two, if I rub it, it cuts, it grinds, it abrades. So that's just a a really, it's a falsehood and it's, you know, so what is granite? Granite sits at around seven because it's, depending on, you know, each granite is different, have, some will be harder, they have different minerals, but generally speaking, granite sits below quartz at seven because the hardest material in granite is seven and then it gets reduced a bit because there are softer materials in there. But generally speaking, granite sits around seven. It's quartz would be what you're really looking at. So as granite boxes needs diamond or needs harder materials, just not true. Diorite's essentially the same stone. Now there are differences, and the geologists, you know, will point these out. But they're volcanic stone, and it's generally speaking quartz that gives them their hardness. Now diorite is actually lower than granite. It's not harder. Now andesite, which is a basalt, is the same thing. There are some basalts that have um, other minerals in them, and that will lift it up. But again, generally speaking, they're all sitting at seven or below because quartz is the main feature. And some basalts down to six, so it's actually like they're all below quartz. Now sandstone, including the most crumbly sandstone that cr- you know crumbles in your fingers, is harder than granite on most scale because there's a higher percentage of quartz in there and certain sandstones have up to 15% corundum, which sits at nine. So sandstone is harder than granite on most scale you know but if i get a piece of granite and and bash sandstone with it the sandstone's not going to do very well at all and the granite will be unharmed quartz this is so um now if i get a piece of granite and i grind it into a fine powder so that i can work it with a plastic spoon it does not affect the most scale of it it's the minerals in there so whether it's sandstone or just plain old sand that's being ground up it still has the same mosca this is a feature that all the lost techies use now rule number two mo's hardness has zero to do with chisels it's about sandpaper essentially about what scratches what so uh, either it's garnet corundum slash emery silicon carbide that most sandpapers are made out of and you're if you rub it against a stone or a metal you're cutting that metal by scratching it now again logically speaking so ben says i will you know limestone and copper are only at three on most scale and these are up at seven well like cutlery softer steel mild steel let's call it has the same mose hardness as glass plate as window glass so if this lost ancient high technique which again they've been saying for decades now and still using this argument a glass hammer is higher on most scale than a copper hammer therefore a glass hammer or chisel should be able to work copper and and you know have you ever seen a metal working shop where they're working copper and bronze and using a glass hammer or chisel no you haven't because it's stupid they would not do that most scale has 
zero to do in this argument, but they need to push it. They need to, because it's one of her foundation stones that they used in their early works. And just like with uh, spiral grooves, symmetrical statues, precision serapium quarters, if one of their cards is pulled out from this house of cards, it all collapses. And yeah, lost ancient high tech. These guys apparently got stonemasons and expert manufacturing engineers and with them. And they don't even know the basics. And well, actually, let's be honest, they do know, because if they didn't know before, they sure as hell know now, but they need to keep selling this lie. And then therefore, younger Dryas impact, all history was inherited from the past. And this is what the stone is, the gateway drug to the what they're really selling, which is the mystery, the apocalyptic vision, you know, of this pure society and will come. And there's a great example of that coming up. But whenever you hear these fellas talk about most scale and stone, they're talking about polishing and scratching. And that does like cuts like granite will cut, whether it's with a copper saw or a copper drill, using granite dust will cut granite. Same with diamond. Diamond, people working polishing diamond still use copper lapping tools and diamond dust against it. So Mo scale is no scale. A seven and a half. So diamonds are 10 on the Mo scale uh -huh. of hardness. Um, you know, things like hardened steel might be a 6.5 and, and granite and granite can be a 6.5 to a seven. Some are diorite and flint and some of the other harder stones, you know, um, either porphyry or, or dolerite can go up to like seven and a half, eight. Okay. Uh, corundum. Uh, topaz, things like this are a nine, and and they, we have artifacts made from things like corundum that they were shaping with a nine. I mean, it's as, and copper and bronze are like three and four finger. You know, it's, it's right. these are extreme. Marble's like a three, uh, calcite's like a three. This is why a lot of sculptures done in oh, marble okay. these days. So a statue of much, David is that marble? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, marble. It's much, much, much softer than this stuff. Like incredibly. Yeah, if you're if you're a modern sculptor, you ain't working in granite just because. Like it's right. it's not a good choice. Like it's you're gonna burn your tools out. It's gonna be a nightmare. And right. modern sculptors will know this. But yeah if you're a, if you're a modern sculptor you ain't working in granite just because like it's right. it's not a good choice like it's that you're going to burn your tools out it's going to be a nightmare and right modern sculptors will know this but <laughs> Yeah, if you're a, if you're a modern sculptor, you ain't working in granite just because. Like it's right. it's not a good choice. Like it's that you're gonna burn your tools out. It's gonna be a nightmare. And right. modern sculptors will know this. But yeah if you're a, if you're a modern sculptor you ain't working in granite just because like it's right. it's not a good choice like it's that you're going to burn your tools out it's going to be a nightmare and right. modern sculptors will know this but finally after almost four weeks of carving will it finishes the day Yeah, the point is, is that again, even with decent decent hieroglyphs like this, you know, it's not polished, right? Even in the even in the good hieroglyphs that are on the the side of this statue, like this, the interior of the bird, not polished. The 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 the, the shen ring around that that uh, the king's cartouche there, uh, not straight and not polished. The lotus flower motif below it is polished. Like so, it's like when this is a different. This was done with a different technology, potentially done at an entirely different time. So it's difficult to say then that the writing is is how we can date and relate um, this artifact into the story of history. It's entirely possible that this was inherited. We don't know how old it is. And then somebody wrote their name on it later and claimed it. And in fact, we have evidence of that very thing. Um, in fact, here's one more good example of the polish. I like this shot because it shows you the polished stone. And then, the, you know, you can oh, see yeah. the chisel marks. This is 
all this uh, these these hieroglyphs mm. they're good but they're all done by hand you know and we know that the practice of writing of somebody usurping an artifact Ramses Flinders Petrie called Ramses II the great usurper mm -hmm. he's one of the people think about him as one of the most powerful kings of ancient Egypt uh, he but he was notorious for, for writing his name on stuff this is this is an example here I can show you real quick it's like that's the cartouche of Ramses II right here um, but <laughs> But if it happens tomorrow, within a couple generations, wipes out our civilization. Within a couple generations, I mean, we're going to be dancing around campfires, like with black pieces of stone that look like a cell phone. Like we're trying to, like, oh yeah, if we dance around the right way around this around this fire, this black piece of stone is going to tell me everything. It's it's going to be able to talk to my ancestors. I can do. I can get all of the data. Like the technology of yesterday becomes a myth and legend and magic, and mm -hmm. and you try to capture it through ceremony. I mean, it's plasma TVs are a story you tell around a fire at some point. Right, right. So long long-winded explanation for how I think I think it's a I think I do think it's a viable lens with through which to try and view our past. Like in particularly places like Egypt. Mm -hmm. Um I think there's a longer time frame involved here. And then going back to some of the inscriptions